<laughs> okay, could you raise your hand if you are first time in this class? Raise your hand if you're first time. All right, so one person. Okay. All right. So um, before we start, um, I should. I I realize there is a limit that Replit has. So you cannot use Replit for free more than a certain number of time, some certain number of hours. So I think we should change our platform to somewhere else. So there are many options, but uh, in the morning class, I tried out the Colab, Google Colab, Colab. So that kind of worked. So I think it's going to be work uh, so, so I'll introduce some, the way, I mean, I just, in, I'll introduce how to do collab. So just, just search for collab in the website. And if you click, it automatically goes to collab. So, this, if you see this page, you can just click new notebook here. And I already created one, so I'm going to click mine. So if you can, if you click, if you create a page in Colab, this is the page, this is the screen you will see. So we're going to work in this Colab in, environment. So by the way, I heard that you're, if you're taking programming class anyway, then the programming class allow you to use any uh, IDE or any platform. So you can use Jupyter Notebook installed in your computer, or you can use any IDE such as PyCharm or VS Code, whatever you want. Uh, I'm using this so that if you don't know how to install Python and you're not used to use the VS Code, then this is the easiest way or and fastest way to set up your Python environment. All right, so any trouble, if you have any trouble, raise your hand setting up the Colab environment. Okay, if there's no trouble, <clears throat> um, then let's begin. So, Last time uh, we finished with the CAPTCHA, but I think I should go through one more time again. Uh, by the way, so we're going to have nine projects throughout the semester. You don't have to do all of nine. You can only uh, do one for each half of the semester. So before the midterm, you have to choose one project uh, and first five or six among the first five or six projects, you choose one to do as a group project. Um, we're gonna make a group next week. Uh, so you have to keep which project you want to do in mind before you come to next week class. So we're going to form a group based on the topic that you want to do. So I'm going to ask you which topic you want to uh, complete and then based on the answers i'm going to group you guys into five or six group of five or six and that's going to be your group for the first half of the semester so if you want if you have some friends that you want to work with then discuss before you come to class which project you guys want to be or you guys want to concentrate you don't make you don't have to make a group of four or five already because if you just want, if you have one person, uh, uh, you really want to work in a same group, then just uh, uh, just just talk to your friends so that you guys are in the same topic that you want to uh, complete. Um, if based on how many people you want, they they want to be in a different project. I'm going to form a group of five or six. So don't worry about making an entire group. Just uh, make sure that 
you have the topic. Okay, so here's the project that I just briefly discussed. So here is the um, capture image. So it's a, supposed to be the easy project, but if you have, you know, if you have ability to make, uh, to do the project easily, then I suggest you to do more. So the basic objectives are making a capture image like this in, in numbers. So what you need to do is this, making a distortion of each image of the letter. So let, let me just go through what's going to be our basic strategies here. So here now we have, okay. So CAPTCHA. So whatever you do, what you have to think about this as an input and output. So input, is string of numbers. Am I recording? Okay. So input is a string of number. And what is an output? So output is an image of CAPTCHA. So how do you want to, oh, sorry, so input and output. How do you fill in between? So when you take the input, uh, input goes to, so let's see. You have to split your string into characters. So split into characters. So what should you do next? For each character, you have to create an image of that character. For each character, create an image of it. And what, what to do next? So after you create an image of each letter, character, you have to take, make, into a little bit of, you know, this distorted image. Distort the image. And then the later part, put all in a single. Put all in a single image as a CAPTCHA image, right? So you might have a different, you know, uh, layout of the of the process, but this is basically it, right? So if you want to add more tasks, then some more process should be thrown in into this process. But we're going to uh, follow this process together just to show you how this should be done. This could be done. So let's look at the collab here. So, okay, so CAPTCHA, what is it? One. Close here. Oh. CAPTCHA string is one, two, three, four. So this is a, just a test. Okay. So, so I'm, what I'm going to show, what I'm going to do is at the end, I'm going to save figure into captcha.png. So that's basically the start and end. But before start anything, you should import necessary package. So let's import lib pyplot okay yes it's too small okay so what was the first step 
um, I want to split everything into characters. So, okay, split into character. So, for each character, what I basically want to do is the same thing, right? So I want to just repeat everything again and again. So I'm going to iterate over every captcha character. Something. Okay, so I do something. So for each character, what should I do first? I should make an image, right? I should make an image of that character. So I'm not going to put a one single big line of the script. So I'm going to split it into many functions. So I'm going to give a different uh, role for each function. So first function that I'm create is going to uh, give me the information about the image of that character. So I'm going to get the image information from this function. So character to array, I didn't define yet. So if you run this code, it will give you an error because I didn't define what character to array is. So I'm going to do it uh, after I run, write everything here. And then uh, this is supposed to be the x, y coordinate in n numpy n d array of the character. That's what I'm supposed to use. So and once I have this, I'm going to uh, plot it in the figure, right? So plt scatter like this so maybe i don't need this just this way and i need color right so i need some color information so i need a uh, color to be random um, so you can import the random package uh, as other name but i use i want to use I don't want to use the import the random separately, then you can use this. So this color is just a tuple of three random numbers from zero to one. So this will be used color, used as a color of the letter. Okay, so um, all right, so if I do this and let's see what happens. Um, so still I need to define this function. So let me, how should I, uh, okay. So I want to add something or oh, maybe I can just put it here. So I didn't define this function yet. So let me define function first, define character to array as a function. So you have to de you have to put the definition of this function before you use it. So that's why I'm using putting line above here. So just to make sure that this works, I'm going to put pass here so that it doesn't make an error, but doesn't do anything. If I put pass, that means it's simply literally pass this thing. Okay, so just doing nothing. So let's start. Uh, yeah, let's run this. You can run the code by simply press the button on here. Okay, so it's a it shows me an error because I didn't uh, output anything. So x y is empty here, so that's why it's an error because I tried to look up the empty empty variable. So let me uh, let's say. Let me do this. So I'm just trying to give nothing just to make sure that this works. So let's run again. Um, okay, so maybe put it into double string. What? Okay. 
Fury. Let's do this way. So it's MP zeros two by two. Hmm? Character to array. MP zero. Ah, sorry. So it's a two two. Okay. Okay. So now it works. So. I think it's going to be saved somewhere. Okay, so captcha.png. So yeah, basically. So um, I didn't do anything like meaningful here. So I'm just uh, just to show you how this process works. So I'm going to separate out each character and put that character into a function called character to array, and then I'll put a array of points. Uh, point coordinates uh, so that I can put it into scatter plot and then uh, save it into figure uh, image. So that's why I get the captcha.png after this. Okay. So what I did is just I pre created um, the 2x2 two two array, a 2x2 two two matrix of zeros. So it's not going to do anything meaningful. So I need to change something in here. So everyone okay with this? Okay. So let's try to do something on here. So it's going to be long, so make sure that you got this right. So um, I'm going to plot the text of that character with the font size quite large going to be 80 and then I'm going to you know, turn off the axis and I'm going to save that in temp.png so by the way I'm going to limit my range of x and y to be minus one to one And, okay, so because I want the separate image, so whenever I draw a character that draws my, my figure in a window, okay, like a imaginary window, after I draw that character, after save that image into file, I have to clean up my imaginary window. So I have to do this uh, cleaning up. CLF is cleaning up. Clean up the window. And then uh, let's read from the image. So PLT imread from temp.png. So temp.png has an information. So maybe we can, before, before trying to do this, so let's test, test out whether it works. It's completed. So. Okay, so here's temp.png. So maybe, how do I show this page? So you can see that there is four appeared, okay? But there's a dot, uh, I think that didn't go away. So I think something else required plt.cl. Sorry, so I forgot the command to look up again. CLA, yes, CLA, 
Okay, so let's try this out. Make sure that ten didn't go away, still didn't go away. Capture PNG. Okay, so that's okay. But okay, so I think I need one more PLT close. Okay, let's see what happens. Let me let me check if, if this works. PLT um, figure. Okay, so I just want to get rid of this dot here because it seems like um, this dot is coming from the scatter plot here so i want to so that's why what i'm what that's what i was saying so you the plt shares the same screen so every time so you have to clean up and then close it and open again so let's try to do this way so plt figure put it on, on top so i want to open up a new figure every time i draw the text Seems like it doesn't... Oh, okay, so now it works. Okay, so now it works. The dot is gone. Okay, so... So what happens is... Okay, so let me do it one number here. It's not refreshing it. So... Okay, so when I run this code... So first of all, this runs, then... Uh, I only have one in the character, so if one character goes to this function, and function takes the character, and then try to open up a figure, and try to text, uh, draw the text with the certain options here, and then it saves to temp.png. So what the temp.png has is the image of one. Okay, so that's the one here. And since we're going to use the same figure window for drawing other letter, we're going to clear the image, clear the window using this command. I'm not sure whether you can delete one of these. So just make sure that put everything here. And then uh, I'm going to read the image file again. So that's basically it. Um, one more thing is we need to put more more lines here okay so once i read the image uh, i don't really need to keep the file uh, file anymore but uh, you can either delete the file using the package os uh, or you just leave it like this uh, okay so once you get this so it's the same thing as before um array so I'm going to get the XY from array to XY files, putting the image information inside, and then return that thing XY. So here's, here's the workflow. So character turned into NP, NP array by reading the image. And then NP array is going to turn into an XY coordinate information so that I can manipulate to plot, uh, make a capture image. So I need to define this function array to xy in above here. Definition array to xy m. Okay, so I need to get the width and height of that image. And this is similar to what we did before. 
So width is from i for i in range w for j here. And y similar. So what y, since we don't want the upside down image, h minus j instead. And I'm going to make it into NumPy array for, for the convenient reason. So why? Because I'm going to rotate the figure later on. Um, so I want the scale of the size of an image, size of a pixel coordinate to be uniform. So I'm going to make a NumPy array. First, I'm going to... Um, Okay, so well, first thing is I'm going to take the only the black points, right? So uh, black indices are where. Uh, oh, by the way, I I forgot to put the color information. So color C J I for I in range W for J in range H. And I take the indices for range and let me see if C I zero. So here I can use a clever way of doing this. So I just want to product multiply every entry of this uh, color, and I want this to be less than zero so that make sure it's. black or oh I forgot i in range yes. so x is taking only black indices and y is also taking black indices again now before we return x and y like this I want to re uniform, uniformize this x and y coordinate length. So first of all, I want to make sure that the coordinates are centered at the origin. Okay. I want to make x and y to be centered at the origin. So currently, the x coordinate runs from 0 to the width. The width is like 100. Okay. So because the image has a resolution like 100 pixel wide and 100 pixel high. So I want to make sure that it's shifted to the origin. And then uh, I want to make sure that it's scaled. So uh, you can divide by W or H or whatever you want. To just yeah, I think that's better. You know, really scale it like this. And then return X and Y. By the way, so if I return this, oh, I shouldn't return this way. So I'm returning this as NP array of X and Y in two by two by N matrix, right? So row there are two rows and number of columns is same as number of points in the in the in the figure of letter whose color is black. So let's take let's make sure whether it's it's working. So I take the xy from here. Um, okay. So let me run this code, uh, there's an error. So it says, uh, what does it say? Uh, character two, C refer before assignment the scope. Okay, so C, it says C is used somewhere. Okay, so C is a, no, sorry, it's not C. It was a typo, it's an M. So I need to take the color information from the input M, 
not C, sorry. So and there's another problem. The problem is it's out of bound. So I have wait width. Oh, it's a height and width, right? It's a height and width. Sorry. Okay, so now it's working. Um, uh, that means I have, you know, this figure. Okay, so I just retrieved all the. Uh, wait, so. It's a very small image, so it's very small. Mm. So I, I want, what I want is I want this thing, the middle of this image to be 0, 0, but it's not 0, 0. I think it's because I didn't align my text in here. So when I draw the text here, I need align the text at center. So I'm going to put the option horizontal alignment center and the vertical alignment center. I'm going to run the code again. Oh, by the way, so I put the link to this uh, note in the Notion site. So if you go to the Notion site, there is a code app link. If you go to, not this one, not this one, section five. So this is our code app link to the page that I'm looking at right now. So if you go to the, this link, you can see the same code. Okay, so let's see. So it's uh, almost in the middle. Yeah, and now it's good. Now we are good. So we are almost in the middle. Um, let's let's see. So I want I don't want this much scale. So maybe maybe I just get rid of this. So let's see how it works. So scaling really doesn't matter. So I think that's this this one it might be better. Okay, so we have almost scaling up to let's see minus forty to forty, something like this. Okay, so so now it's working. What we have to do is rotating, right? So we got the x, y coordinate. We need to rot uh, distort image, distort x and y, and then plot. So I didn't define the function distort, so I'm going to define it here. De define distort x and y. And distortion is after you dilate and then rotate. So L1, L2 are random number. Um, from point A to 1.2 and same thing for L2. So here, here. And okay, so let me take X and Y information from input X and Y. So I'm going to stretch my X by L1, Y by L2, and then I have to rotate. So rotation angle is also from minus, let's see, pi over four to plus pi over four. So random rand function gives you random number between zero and one. So I'm just taking a rescale or uh, rearranging the number so that I arrange from minus something to plus something. So x and y is now this. So let me uh, put it this way. So x, I don't think it works. So yeah, maybe let's do it the other way. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want my line to be exceed the width of this. So let me use the matrix. So instead, so rotation 
matrix is numpy array, 2 by 2 numpy array of np cosine theta minus np sine theta and so on. So So here, NP is NP array of X and Y. So I'm going to multiply rotation matrix with X, Y. Then I'm going to return that result. So let's, let's see how it works. Um, so I'm going to run and see how capture image look like. Okay. So now every time you run, uh, it doesn't refresh automatically. Let's see. I hope that it refreshes automatically, but so every time it runs, uh, you get the different size and distortion of the image. The same one, but it's different shape, different, different color. It takes a little bit more time, so yeah, like sl slightly different. Okay, now so far it works. Uh, what should I do next? Um, I need to put se several characters. So instead of just one, I need to do one, two, three, four. So that's two, one, two, three, four. So just change the captcha string to one, two, three, four. And then let's try run this again and see what happens. So then captcha image show me. Like this. Oh, where is it? Yes. So one, two, three, four are all overlap each other. The reason is because I didn't shift it, right? It has an overlapping, but doesn't give me how to retrieve the original string because it's all in the same place. So you need to shift, and also you need some opacity on each color. So instead of using the, I mean, you can use the random color, but opacity must be set to be small. So alpha equals to, wait, alpha equals to 0.3 and before you put the number here uh, so I'm going to add a off so maybe off is something like 20 let's say off is off position so or maybe off is starting from zero but I'm going to add off position horizontally and off is 0, 0.0. I'm going to add off by 20 every time. Okay. So y is the same, but just the x-axis are added off by 20 each time. So I'm going to run this again. And let's see. Okay, so here's a figure. Oh, it's not that much. So I should add more of, so 330, how about 30? Okay, so now it's, whoa, okay. So I'm not, uh, I don't get enough opacity that I desired, but I guess how about making alpha, is it because I, alpha equals to one is fully solid. Maybe put it into 0.1. Maybe it will give me more opacity. So, yeah, 
I think it's better than before. Okay, so now you get uh, one, two, three, four, actually going to the right direction, and you can recognize the number. So the first task might be too easy. If you can just change it to any you know character you want, if you want this much, then it takes a little bit more time. Uh, maybe I put too much number, too much the characters here. So maybe I put uh, this four characters. So let's run this again with the character inside, not only the number. Then it will give me the capture image of the letter and the letter and number, like this one. So you might recognize by looking at this font size and uh, look, look at the shape, uh, but computer may not. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how you do your project. Well, actually, this is not. Uh, this should be not the entire project uh, because you need to do something more on top of this. You do. You do just as if you so research. Like you created the captcha and you want to test it out. How good is your captcha? Uh, you should do something more, or you do something uh, other than the. Stretching and rotation. You want to do some wiggly thing on your letter. What should you do on the distort function? That's up to you. Other than that, um, I want to hear any questions if you have any. Is there any questions? So I just saved. So if you go to the link that I posted on the Notion, you can see the same code on the web. You have to refresh it, refresh the page if you already open that link. Okay, so let's um, let's do our today's lecture. Okay, so today we're going to talk about sequence and series uh, sequence series for the next time. Um, so. Sequence is simply a sequence of number. In our class, we're going to talk about only the sequence of number. Um, there are many ways to express sequence. Uh, you can just simply list all the numbers or first few numbers if it's an infinite series, a sequence, or you can give a general form, a general formula of a sequence, or you can express your sequence in sentence like this one. Uh, for example, if you want to express the sequence of, uh, expressed by this sentence, what does that mean? So, bn is an approximation of square root 2 by nth decimal place. We know that square root 2 is approximately 1.414 and so on. So, b1 should be approximation of this number up to first decimal point, that should be 1.4. B2 is up to two decimal point, 1.41. B3 is 1.42, and so on. So that's perfectly fine method of describing a sequence. And the last one is the recurrence relation. So you see, this is a Fibonacci sequence, and this sequence can be computed based on the value of predecessor predecessors. So you can compute the n plus second entry only when you know the n plus first and nth entry. So in order to define entire sequence, you need to know the first few element in the sequence. So that's the recurrent sequence. So let's try to look at uh, let's try to compute few sequence. So 
So the reason why I'm doing this is that you need to understand how computer handles the real number. So for example, if I want to compute a n, the sequence of this form, and I want to, let's say, compute these two numbers in two parentheses <clears throat> separately and then multiply together to get the value, you, get, you don't get the correct answer. So the way I could do is that I first uh, divide one by this number and then multiply this number and then divide out by this number. So this code is what it, what it actually do. So let's do it on the collab together. So this is simple, simple code. So, so n is the index that I want to compute the sequence and a is the value that I'm going to store the value of the sequence in. So I'm going to use uh, the iteration for n times to compute 1 over 4 to the power of n plus 1. Sorry, n is not n. n is n plus 1. So I'm going to uh, divide out by 4 n plus 1 times to get the first first term. And then I'm going to multiply 2n plus 2 factorial term. So I'm going to use 2n plus 2 factorial. Um, and then multiply every time with i. But be careful that uh, in the Python range function always give you the list of number starting from 0. I don't want multiply zero. I want to start from one. So that's why I'm adding one in from i because i start from zero. And then I want to divide out by the denominator. So i in the range of n plus one, I'm dividing out by uh, i plus one. That's i, that's the number starting from one squared. So in MATLAB, if you want to square a number, then you have to use double asterisk like this. So and then let's print out the result. It's zero. Why is it zero? I'll let you discuss in the group. So figure out why it's zero. You can talk to your friends next to you right now. <laughs>
Okay, so first of all, is there any group figured out why it's zero? How about group one? Did you find why it's zero? Okay, too small. So because A is too small, why is A too small? Okay. Uh -huh. So it's already small here, right? Right, it's small already. So if you try to look up the value, after you divide four many, many times, it's already zero. So after that, after this point, no matter what value you're multiplying, so you're multiplying quite large number, but it's already zero, so that's why you get zero at the end. But the question is, okay, so you said something about Python uh, cannot recognize small number. So the question is why when you multiply, why, when you divide four many, many times, why do you get zero? Even though it's not zero, mathematically, it's not zero. Four to the, and one over four to the power of 10,000, it's not zero. It's small number, but it's not zero. Why does computer or Python think that it's a zero? Anyone discussed about that? Is there any group discussed about why? Okay, so here's the test. Okay, so discuss a little bit more about floating point, floating point. So here, floating point. So here's the keyword, floating point. Search for what the floating point is, and then try to figure why this is zero.
Okay, so any group figured out what floating point is? Any group want to talk about floating point? Yeah, how about group six? Yeah, well, so first of all, what, what is floating point? Value of what? Pixel. Pixel? Yeah. And uh, if it's very, 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 very small number, uh -huh. and uh, as a result, uh, it will, uh, it will, act, uh, it will, uh, like, uh, figure our uh, fixed number, that's why it's tightened up automatically, so that as a zero. Okay, yeah, so, um, you're partly right. So, Python handles the real number in a certain range. So that's the reason why it's zero. It's out of a range that Python can handle. So the question is, why is that? Why Python only handles certain range of real number? And anyone talked about that issue? Why Python can only handle certain range of numbers? Machine. Right, so it's actually it's a architecture how computers are architecture or, or program programming languages are architecture that that way. So, so basically, it's a story like this. So and let me let me give you the his not the history, so a brief explanation of what why floating point is about what it's about. So here. Um, human are familiar with the uh, 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 decimal decimal point, right? So we can express numbers like that's too big. Sorry, twenty five. Okay, um, but computer don't understand twenty five. Computer only understand in binary. So twenty five is 16 times 8 plus 1. So in order to let computer do something on 25, number 25, you have to make it into binary number. So 0, 1, uh, zero, one two, two, four. Is it right? So 1, 2, 4, 8, and yeah, one, right. So this is binary digits of 25, right? Now, same thing for decimal points. So if you want to represent 20.2, that is 25 plus 2 over 10, right? 25 plus 1 over 5. So you can express 25 as 11001. That's one piece of information about the number. And the decimal point, now you have to convert again into binary information. So 1 over 5 is 1 over, let's see, 8 plus, let's see, if I take something like this. So you have to put everything in 1 over 2 to the power of something. So here it comes. I don't know how to express this, but just this format. Okay. So if you try to, you know, it's same as whenever you try to explain 1 over 3 as a decimal point, it's a 0 0.333333. So you sometimes requires infinitely many this, that, uh, digits to express certain number in certain decimal. So here, 1 over 5 is in decimal, but if you want to 
be expressed in binary, then you might you may require infinitely many numbers, many digits here. So, well, for example, here in this case, you might want to express in 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. In binary decimal point. Okay? So that's where uh, the floating point comes in. So you have certain number of this, uh, binary digit that represent uh, integer. And you have certain number of binary digit representing the 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 number less than one. You cannot use infinitely many bits to express one number. There are certain bound on the number of bits that you can use. So here, bit is the one or zero. So the computer memory always, if you look down into deeper and deeper down to earth, it's always zero or one. So the number of 0 and 1 you can use for each number are fixed. It could be at sometimes 32 or sometimes 64, not precisely, but because they need to use one bit for the sign, plus or minus of the number. But anyway, there are certain bounds that you can use. And actually, this is not how they use the, the binary digits here, by bits here, because sometimes it's actually what floating point does is that it you... Uh, put this into, let's say, if, if it's 25.2, then you can point, you can make it into a scientific way of writing it. So you take this number and you take this number, that's exponent, and this is, I forgot the, 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 the wording here. So you put this into bits, you put this into bit of strings of bits, and you put this into string of bits and you combine this to get floating point so what happens when you have a small very very small number so for example if you want to express 10 to the minus like thousand here right so this thousand maybe let's see uh yeah thousand here this also converts into bit, uh, bit, bit, bit digit information. So um, you need certain number of bits, number of bits, in order to express your exponent, whether it's positive or negative, you need a certain number of bits to express your exponent. But if that exponent is too big, then you need more and more number of bits. So there are also certain bounds on the number of bits that you can express your exponent. If it's bigger than the certain number, fixed number, you can use in the floating point. What happens is, it considered to be zero. If it's too small, if it's out of the box, out of the range that it can use as a number of bits, uh, it, can be, it can be used for the number of bits, then it considered as, now it's too big. Now it, let's take it in as a zero. So that's why, so there is a limit on number of bits that you can use for writing the real number. The reason why I'm talking this is anytime you're trying to compute something, uh, if you compute in a small scale, doesn't matter, but you have to be careful whenever you're uh, trying to generalize this, this thing. So 10,000 is not that big compared to a large number, but still, in this case, it makes a trouble. So let me give you another example. So here is um, another task that you can use. So here's a sequence. You probably know what this sequence is about. It's giving you a natural constant when you put the large number n. And okay, let's try to compute the a n with the large n, large index. So let me put another code box here and Let's see, my n is 
10,000 and one a is one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply one plus one over n n times right that's basically the definition of the sequence just you just saw so let's run this code um well not oh not not division multiplying okay so so multiplying one plus one over n n times you get something that you know about already 2.718 something something now I want more accurate number. I want more accurate limit. So let's put more zero here. So run this code. It's now uh, 100,000. Okay, it took about one second. Here is the duration of time that takes for the running the code box. Let me put one more zero here. It's a million. Uh, it takes not that much. So how about we put more zeros here. It took about two seconds. Let me put one more zero. So how many zeros are there? So it's a hundred million. So I think at this point, it takes quite longer than it was before. So I think it will take about 10 seconds, maybe. So if you put more zero and more and more, uh, the time it takes getting longer and longer. And it's not efficient. Not at all. Um, what we are doing here is doing the same task repeat and repeat. There are easier way or efficient way of doing this. So the, actually the answer is in the slide, but think about how we can compute the sequence of, of this index how many how big it is 100 100 million 100 yeah 100 million way faster than this 19 second so figure out how you can compute this sequence faster than this so i'll let you discuss or think through first and then discuss in the group So this is your task. Do something in between, not like the box above, because that's slow. Do something else differently to compute faster.
Okay, so let me ask if anyone have a question on uh, on the, the the top part. So the original code block. Does anyone have a question, or if in any group have any questions about this this code? No. Okay. So can anyone tell me about your discussion? Is, is, is there anyone, any group, thought about how to make it faster than this one? Yeah. Using nested? Nested of what? Loop? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, like count all from one to one linear. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's too long. Yes. If you take double, it's faster and it loop faster. Okay, so how do you take nested loop? Yeah. Yeah, so the loop is for what? So, so how do you construct the loop? Double loop here. So you know that if you have a nested loop, nested iteration, then the entire uh, the number of computation is actually multiplied for the both of loops. the The way you can make it faster is decreasing the number of operations. So even if you split the 100 million into 100 times of n million times, still it's a 100 million times op operation, right? So something, yeah, what, yeah, it's a good, good idea that you can try that. So for example, if I have uh, this way, so for example, If I do this, it's the same number of computation still. So, so I'm doing million iteration in the outer iteration, outer loop, and in the hundred iteration in the inner inner loop. But overall, it's the same number of iteration as before. Okay, so that's is that what you were talking? So it's a good try, uh, but it doesn't really improve the speed. So in order to in, I mean, decrease the time it takes, you need to lower the number of computation. So anyone thought about how? Yes. Right. So that's basically where go was going to talk about in the next slide. But let me give you with a with this um, writing here. So here, here, here's the easy example, a small example. So let me take the 25 again. So as I said, it's a one, one, zero, one, two, four, eight, zero, one, right? Binary. So uh, this is same as two to the fourth, two to the eight, two to the four, uh, zero. Right? So I want to take this. I want to compute this. That's my goal. 
I'm going to replace the inside of parenthesis as x. So it's basically x is not changed. Uh, and also n is not changed, but just think of this as a some power of some number. Okay. So I'm going to replace n with this expression. So it's x to the power of 2, 4, 2, 8, 2, 0. Okay. And then I can split this into, oh, sorry. What is a plus? Sorry, I can I can split it into two four times two eight times two zero, right? So now, if you take this much multiple of x again, it's not going to improve the speed, but instead, what we're going to do is think of this way. So x to the power of 2 to the power of 4 is taking x square, 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 squaring four times, right? And sorry, it's not 8, 3, I'm x3, okay? And uh, is that right? 16, 8 plus 1, right? Yeah. And then x to the power of 2 of power of 3 is x square, square, square. And then this one is just x. So how many operations do we need here? So I can take a squaring as one operation. So I need 4 here, 4 operation, 3 operation. And well, you can consider this a zero operation, but yeah, zero operation, nothing, nothing to do here. Okay. So how many operations we need? Seven. Instead of 25, I just need seven. So if n is, lar if, if n is a lot larger than 25, this difference is exponential, exponentially small. So that's what we're going to do. That's one way you can do to make it faster. So everyone understood this? Okay. Everyone understood how you can decrease the number of operations? So let's try to implement here. So I need to know this binary uh, decomposition, binary expression. So how do you get binary? For well, first of all, let's try to separate out how to get the binary. Binary. So assuming that I have a function that converts a number into binary, um, I'm going to use this binary. And whenever if b equals to 1, I'm going to multiply a with certain number, okay? So what is that certain number? This number is going to be obtained by powering, the squaring the thing n times, right? So if I take 1 plus 1 over n, and then um right so in the range of uh let's see so okay okay let's do this way so i didn't put here anything yet so let me put it here so what i'm trying to do here is Whenever I get the digit equals to 1, that means I have something to do to get the number, multiplication number. So that's when it happens here. And what I need to multiply is a squaring of this number x. So maybe, I, maybe I, it's better to put x here instead of f because I used x here. Just put x here. And I keep squaring the number, right? So basically what I'm trying to do is x square and then substitute that x square into x again and then repeat 
the number of times. So how many, how many times should I square? How many times should I replace the square? That's the uh, binary plate, binary digit, where binary digits are. So when I look up this binary presentation, bi binary representation of number, uh, I need to know which index I'm looking at. So the easy way you can look up the index is this way. So you can either go through one by one for the items in the list, or you can also retrieve the index of that item along with the key uh, value of that index, uh, value of that item. So I'm going to repeat i times because after doing enumerate, it means that it returns the index and the value together. So i is the index, b is the value of in that list, b and n. So b and n is the, the result of binary expression here. So that's pretty much it. And then I didn't define what binary is. How do you define the binary? So let me just uh, binary define it this way. So let me check whether it's uh, uh, working correctly. So I'm going to just uh, test with a specific value here, zero, zero, one. So it's as if it's number n equals to 25 and see if it works. Uh, in order to see if it works, uh, yeah, well, this, this way. Oh, forgot the column here. So A times, um, okay. Where, where is N? Okay, so N is here. Oh, let me, let me try. Okay, so this is bin n for n and x is x. I think I, ha I had this problem before in the morning class. So it seems like x is not initialized every, every time I do this. So does anyone know how to fix this? Like, I need x to be initialized every time. I don't think it's initialized properly. So that's why it makes problem. No, maybe not. So n. Oh, that's because, okay, so, okay, so maybe I had too big number here. So yeah. Okay, that works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, not, not a problem. Okay, so, so now I have I, I just tested, tested with this uh, fixed number, fixed output. So that's why I get this number. So anyway, so yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm giving you, giving the binary function, uh, giving the bi bin n with this list of zero and one, meaning that n is equal to 25. And every time I look up the value in the list, I get the index and the value. And when the value is one, I try to multiply the result with the iterated square of this one plus one over n this way. So after this iteration of iterated in square, I get the desired number to multiply. So that's the result. So now let's make it work for any n. So how do you make a binary representation of given n? So let's test out with this 25 again. So I want to keep dividing the number by two, okay? So my list is empty first. I'm going to append the remainder of two when I divide it by two. And then after I get the remainder, I'm going to divide the number by two, which means that I can shift the binary digits of the number to the right so that I get delete the rest, uh, delete the first digit. So I don't have to reverse this. Okay. So, and then I'm going to return 
pin n. Okay. So before I look up the value of n, I want to print out whether the pin n is correct. I think I should make it a little bit smaller. So you can see that this is 10011. So it's from the 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 4th, 3rd, 2 to the 4th. That's the correct binary representation of 25. So it's, it's working fine. Okay. So now I can change my n to be large number. Large number. Let's see what happens. So you see, if I take how many, how big, 1 million, then this is the binary representation of 1 million. So it should be read from the left to right. Left is the smallest binary digit and the right is the largest binary digit. And then uh, you can compute your sequence as 2.718. And even if you increase your number to a very large number like this, still computes very fast. It only takes less than one second. Right? It doesn't really depend on the size of n. It actually depends on the logarithmic size of n because it's exponentially decreased. Number of operations are decreased exponentially. So it's rather long, but if you look at the slide, I put the five line or six line code that does the same thing. So you can, uh, you can try to uh, understand yourself how that code in the slide works the same as our slide in here as our code in here so this one by the way this one is a bit shift so if i shift 25 to the right by one then it means shift one uh one one zero zero one to one one zero zero so if I it's so everything in num everything in Python and actually in computer is saved as a binary number binary information so 25 is stored as a 11001 in the memory when I ask to shift the information to the right by one that means 1101 will be shifted to the right so the last one is out of the box so it's now 1100 so it's 24 so so on so it's basically it's same as dividing by 2 and the get rid of all the remaining remainder okay this is same as as n divide by 2 so and divide by 2 and then replace that number by a number into the variable n again so eventually, uh, if you keep shifting, uh, you will get zero because the digit will be shifted by five to get zero. So uh, that's the condition where the loop fails. So in that case, you went through all the digits in number in the binary representation. So you should be now you should return the result. Okay, any questions? Any questions here? Okay, so I want to talk about more on the other part. So here, let's just, uh, think about the sequence, why it, uh, why some sequence are increasing up to infinity and why some sequence are, uh, you know, converging to some number. So for example, let's draw the sequence of this, okay? The same sequence we worked on. So here, uh, I made it like a script, but I can make it as a function. So let me, define a function as, as a function. So I'm going to define a function 
that computes the nth value of the sequence that converges to the not natural constant. So this bin n is binary representation of n and now I um, want to, oh, so, sorry, so A is initialized to 1, and at the end of this function, I should return my A, okay? So I don't need the N anymore. All I need, just put the N inside of, as an input of the function A. So. Now you get the function that computes the nth value of the sequence. So I'm going to use this function a to draw the graph of a sequence. So I'm going to make a new code block here. And n is from, let's see, range from one to nine. So when I do this, then it creates me a list of one to nine, increasing by one. So, and then I'm going to plot n with, uh, for, wait, a equals to a i, list of a i's where i is in the range from one to 10. And I'm going to plot this and plot show. So now you can see the graph that is connecting a dot in a, a sharp way because it's uh, it's basically I want to draw the point, not the lines, because the sequence is just discrete point. So instead of drawing the line, I want to draw a point. So put the mark marker shape here. Uh, so I think. There is a mistake because I already defined A and A is not there. So let me run this again. It's not a good way of writing. So X, Y, so Y here. Okay. So you might want to run the code above here again before you run the code below because I want to make sure that A is defined as a function like this. And then I want to run this again. Change the, oh, so change this again, X and Y. Then I get the plot of points. Each point represents the sequence. So y-axis is the uh, value of the sequence and x-axis is the index. So you can see that the sequence is not going above a certain line. So if you make it into zero to uh, one to 99, then you can actually see what really happens. It seems like it doesn't go above certain line. So actually, it doesn't go above uh, like three, for example. So here is a theorem that you can apply to this sequence that whenever you have a sequence that is increasing all the time, called the monotonic increasing, um, the sequence, next sequence is bigger than the previous sequence it's called monotonic increasing. And if it's bounded above, that means it's always below a certain level here, then this sequence, increasing monotonic increasing sequence, which is bounded above, always converges to some number. So here we have one plus one over n to the power of n. It's always less than three, no matter what n is, and it's always increasing. So that means this is always less than this. So if you try to, you know, uh, prove this inequality, it's not that hard, uh, but you need some calculation. But anyway, uh, it's possible to prove this using basic arithmetics, and this is also possible. So therefore, we can conclude that Bn converges to some number. So this theorem tells you just the existence of limit. Doesn't tell you what exactly the number is. 
how do you find actual limit? In this case, there's no way you can find an actual number. The number that this sequence converges to is symbolically represented by the symbol E. The actual number is never possible to represent as a decimal point. Like it's a 2.718, it, it goes forever, right? So whenever you try to deal with the computation, don't try to come, don't try to compute exact value. For example, you don't know uh, infinitely many, you know, real numbers. Like for for example, square root of two. This is a this is not a number. This is an expression. This is an expression that this number, whatever that is, can be squared to be equal to two. So this is not a number. If you want to want the number, actually compute the number, you need to compute using program or calculator. So anyway, um, the sequence, you're probably familiar with this concept of sequence anyway, but I wanted to emphasize it's how you compute a sequence, not how you understand the sequence as a you know, mathematical, uh, mathematical object. So it's important to know how to compute a sequence or the limit of a sequence. So there are more things that we could uh, cover, but I skipped a lot. Uh, but uh, I advise you to go through this task, for example, um, this one. So if bn is given in these settings, like in a sentence, how would you come up with a, of a script or Python program that computes bn for any n. So if, if user input n, how do you compute bn? So this is a one way you can compute, sorry. And you can also compute the number, the same number with a binary expression. So for example, if you want to express square root of two, so 1.414 is a decimal representation of number. There's another representation number, actually any number, in terms of two. So you can express this in the binary expression as a decimal point. And then you can get more accurate and more efficient program. And also there is another way of expressing, computing the square root of two. So I advise you to do this. So if you take a n equals to uh, 2 over a n. So it's a recurs recursive formula of a sequence. So first of all, a n equals a, a 1 is 1, and a 2 is 1 over 2, 1 plus 2. So it's a 3 over 2. And you put this 3 over 2 into the formula of a 3 again. So uh, 3 over 2 plus 2 over 3 over 2 and so on. If you keep doing this, you get almost equals to square root of 2. The limit is square root of 2. And if you compare the speed of getting the accuracy, accurate number of square root of 2, this one is way faster than the previous ones, like this ones. So actually, when you look up this function, like square root function in NumPy, I'm not sure what NumPy does, but many programs implement the square root function and actually it uses this sequence. So try to write the code that computes this sequence, the limit of this sequence. Uh, that's your assignment. You don't have to submit any, any of the assignment that I'm telling you here, but that's the one way you can do. Because after all, uh, after explaining the sequence and series, we're going to do the, uh, I'm going to introduce the second project and second project is about making a calculator. And what we're going to do in the second project is that you're going to implement certain functions without using NumPy package. You have to use purely your algorithm to compute square root functions or sine function, exponential function, and so on. So in, in, for, for doing that, you need to know how to write write the iterations and 
computing the, the limit of a sequence and so on. Okay, so, so next time we're going to talk about the series. Um, if you have any questions, let me know after class or see you on Wednesday.